We're taking a look at the Oshun Chief Justice removal, and that's the verdict of uh, that's uh, the pronouncement by the governor of the state, Hadeleke, and the uh, stand of the Nigerian Judicial Council, NJC. This morning, joining us virtually to discuss uh, what this means all around at this morning is Dave Adetu Mobi, a legal advisor who uh, joins us virtually. Good morning. Thanks for joining us on the program. Okay, I guess you're in transit. Oh, I'm we on my can way see. To court, so I had to park. Thank you. We can hear you now. So it's so good to have you on the okay. program this morning. Thank you for making our time to join us. Thank you. All right, so it all Thank broke, uh, just broke on Thursday. Wednesday, there were rumors. On Thursday, there was a pinpoint uh, uh, in the pronouncement by the state governor. That's the uh, Oshun State Governor, Ademola Adeleke, suspended the Chief Justice of the State, Oyebola Ujo. But then, this morning, we have the report that the, the governor has rescinded on his uh, decision to uh, have her removed and replaced. So give us an overview of what you see the case to be like and what it should actually uh, actually, uh, we are under constitutional democracy. Any arm of government must necessarily follow the provision of the constitution. The position of chief judge of a state is a creation of the constitution. The qualification, appointment, tenure, and removal is governed by law. So anything that is outside that will be unconstitutional. Let me just give a brief background to the crisis. I'm aware that, uh, for some time, the ju ju judges in Ocean State have not been paid the, their allowances. And I remember a friend of mine, incidentally, his name is uh, Adebayo Ojo, a former attorney general of uh, Oyo State wrote an open letter that he, intend, he intended to sue the government of Oshun State. Why should judges be suffering in Oshun? Possibly they thought that the former AG of uh, Oyo State, who is also Mr. Ojo, may be a relation of the husband or brother of the chief judge. Because that, I didn't know, that is my state. I didn't know that such is happening. I have a number of friends sitting on the bench over there. So, possibly having exposed the situation that these judges are not paid, they have outstanding. Somebody had to come out to appeal to this guy and say, we are doing our best to pay because we inherited these uh, outstanding allowances from the previous administration. Nobody expects Nobody expected that to come into the public because judiciary do not address newsmen on their welfare. They only address newsmen maybe when they want to go to prison to free people. Uh, it's not even the CJ that will say it. It's the duty of the chief registrar that the honorable chief judge today released also and so number of prisoners whose case was meritorious. So, but in this case, it's now a public view that, well, the judges in Oshun State are being owed months, even more than a year arrears. Their salaries is paid, uh, the salaries are paid directly from consolidated account of the federal government. That is salary, but allowances. I know in Lagos, for instance, apart from the one being paid by NJC, they're entitled to some basics, uh, maintenance of the accommodation, the diesel, uh, personal assistance. That is the responsibility of the state. But in Oshun State, they are only getting the one from Abuja, but not the, the state. So I believe this is one of the issues that led to this. I want to strongly believe because Ojo, uh, Ojo, threatening to sue or sue state government for owing judges uh, allowances. I believe the problem started from there. And the chief judge got the hint and went to industrial court. An injunction was issued. By ordinary rule of law, 
where any even federal government is bound by order of course no organ of government is superior before the law so the government went off its way to see purportedly suspend the chief judge i love the way the nba reacted and people have been calling the president of NBA that even the attorney general of Washington State should be arraigned before legal practitioner disciplinary committee for misadvising his government. We, I, I love the way the bar is referring to these things. If there's any issue, the cases in recent times have shown that the only body that have the disciplinary power is the National Judicial Council. And uh, or should state as of assembly and the governor they are members of the same party and do not constitute that and they were not vested with that power you yeah. are accusing cg of corruption yeah, they... put your paper before the ngc all right uh, dave let's let's move the conversation a little bit uh, further here uh, it is sad that uh, maybe the governor does not know it maybe it's a bit more sad that uh, the, uh, the House of Assembly also um, could not advise properly. But I think this is most, most, I mean, concerning that the attorney, general, the attorney of the state also is in the know of this um, um, event. I don't know, what can you, what does this speak to for you? Well, I, can, I have to admit that the legal profession is undergoing very terrible times, maybe due to poverty. You will see people who desire to cling to an office. They would rather take to the advice of politicians instead of advise the politician as to what the law says. That is why I endorse the call of the persons that have called on the president to proceed further to file a case against the attorney general for professional misconduct. That will teach them a lesson that you don't, as a lawyer, they are, you, are, you may be a lawyer and a politician combined, but by your by virtue of the your membership of the legal profession, we have rules of professional conduct. If you, I don't know if you are aware, the former attorney general under, uh, I think, um, Yaradua, Andua Khan, they drag a case to him up to Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court held that he cannot hold public office for 10 years. I believe that should serve as a notice to political office holders of today that whatever they do is still subject to a higher power as uh, vested by the law of the land. Uh, Barrister Ajit Mobi. Okay, uh, let's quickly have uh, Barrister Kabir uh, Akimbolu join us also. He joins us virtually this morning. Our two barristers have to go to work today, but we thank you for making our time to be part of this conversation. Uh, Barrister Akimbolu, we thank you for joining us. Good morning. Kindly unmute your device. We can't hear you. Kindly unmute it. Okay, I heard something a while ago. Are you there? Okay, we'll come back to you. At least you've seen your face. Let's come back to you now. Uh, that's Barista Ajit Sumobi. You've laid to bear what is uh, the right thing to do and within the ambit of the Constitution. But what's your perception of the action of Governor of uh, Ocean State? Uh, who would you blame? Well, ordinarily, it's, it is politics. What I've observed in our political history in this country is that um, when politicians want to take an action and they know that the incumbent CJ may, be, may not be amenable to it because of the unconstitutionality of that action, the next thing to do is to find a way to deal with such a, an office holder. You will recall, under Rotimi Amechi, River State Court was shut down for almost two years, despite express instruction from the NJC 
instead of obeying NJC, they, they, they resolved to shut down uh, River State Court. Some were even vandalized. Now Amici is out of the way. He is so unpopular in the in the state. So all these things have consequences. Governor, being a governor of, of, of a state is not a monarchical system that you remain governor until you die. I think the problem they may further have with this CJ, they might have been collated. Okay, this woman is going to go next year. And a law was signed that extended that tenure by five extra years. They will now look at ah! how will I cope? I will leave office maximum in another four years. And I want to achieve this. And the CJ will not cooperate. I think we should commend judges with integrity, like the one in Ondo State that refused to bow to the pressure to set up a committee to impeach the deputy governor. So, such are the people we need at this uh, trying times in Nigeria political history, that the political class want to ride roughshod over the judiciary. We should commend the CJs that is able to withstand that pressure. They don't want to die why not dine with the high and mighty and lose the uh, faith of God? I think it should be commended. The trend, it's a political trend in Nigeria. We have seen, we have seen this play out uh, in a few other states like we had mentioned earlier. Um, Sugoto State is actually no exception until we saw that the uh, Supreme Court ought to reverse, uh, reverse the position. Um, how do we get our politicians um, to get the message that uh, they are not, it does not, decisions like this does not start and end on their table. How do we get them to understand? Yes, you, you made mention of um, uh, a few cases, uh, the Aundana, um, uh, Aundwaka case, which you mentioned. But I think, um, how can we extend these to maybe ex-governors, ensuring that um, when they take certain decisions while in office, they are made to pay for it after they are out of office, when they don't have impunity, immunity rather. Well, yes, yes, that is actually the position of the law. But the question is, who will bear the cut? You know, in Nigeria, we believe that uh, what is gone is gone. Let bygone be bygone. After all, he has left office. But until we make up our mind that, well, these people must be dealt with after office. You know, they always leave office in a pathetic manner. If you drag Amechi to court for what he has done now, they say, ah, the man is down, you are still beating him, this, this, that. It's sentiment. It's sentiment. I, I believe the professional uh, bodies and NGOs, civil society, should take it upon themselves to do this. Because there will be lawyers who we volunteer to uh, pursue that case pro bono. And, uh, and I know the judiciary, Nigeria judiciary, will be ready to stand up to the situation, to live up to expectation. Because if Aundoaka, a senior advocate and a former attorney general, has been spared, he advised expressly that the order of Supreme Court should be disobeyed. He lost from high court to court of appeal to Supreme Court. You can imagine such a person. You advise the president to disobey order of the highest court of the law, and you want the favor of the of the same court. It's never done. It's because nobody has pursued these things. That is why these people persisted in their uh, blatant way of doing things. Uh, let's see if we can now stay with the barrister, Kabir Akibolu. Uh, Barry Sakimbolu, good morning again. Hello, good morning again. Uh, we're trying to see if we can speak with you this morning. So uh, let's come back to you, Barry Sakimbolu. Mobi. Where do we go from here? Are there consequences for what the governor did or the fact that he had withdrawn his pronouncement? Does that settle that? That's the A part of the question. Well, uh, and the B well. part. Okay, please go on. No, why? Let me ask. Okay. The big well, part. The, 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 it because, okay. He has withdrawn it because 
there's a very strong and authoritative pronouncement from the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. And uh, there has been strong calls by even the members of the inner bar for disciplinary action against the attorney general of the state, who is supposed to be the chief law officer of that state. And I know such uh, attorney general would be struggling that while I'm in office, I want to become a senior advocate. This is a dent on his integrity already. Already. When he, anytime he applies, they will use this against him, that this is a lawless attorney general. He does not deserve the silk. So those are the necessary consequences. They are to have, as for the governor, it is the duty of the citizens to decide whether they want him to continue or not. But I can tell you without gazing at the crystal ball, it's not in the, it won't continue. It will not continue. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, what, the, so the B part, let me come to the B part at this point in time. So what is, wh wh where is the state, uh, well, I was saying it's the state of Osho because we're used to that for a long time. What's now uh, the situation under the law in the state, in Ocean State? Do we see Abu Yibola Ojo ask the CJ, however, uh, under grace of interrogation, or what does the law say about the pronouncement and her status? Well, the law says she remains the chief justice, uh, uh, chief judge of Ocean State. Even if the governor does not like it, the position was created by the constitution, not by party constitution, but the constitution that created the office of the governor, also created the office of the chief judge and stipulated the functions of that office. So, even if you are removing or suspending a chief judge, it's not valid until, uh, until such a decision is justified before the uh, National Judicial Council and the National Dis uh, Judicial Council consider those uh, reasons cogent enough to approve such suspension. I think this mechanism is put in place to prevent politicians from manipulating the Nigerian judiciary, which is uh, which is having its fair deal of political storm. So, as far as the law of Nigeria is concerned today, her, law, uh, her ladyship remained the chief judge of a show state. I did more be for being part of the program today. We thank you indeed for joining us on the show. My pleasure.